This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 1.6. The problems will give you practice on hybridization assignments, understanding sigma and pi bonding, understanding the role of lone pairs, and bond angles and geometry. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018 in Lesson 1.6. You can also find additional chemistry videos and information on how to match those videos to your particular course's textbook at protonguru.com. Our first problem is asking us simply to assign the hybridization label for each atom that's indicated by these blue arrows. To do this, we need to understand that hybrid orbitals are needed to hold electrons in sigma bonds and lone pairs. So we need to fill in any missing carbon-hydrogen bonds and any lone pairs that are not drawn for us. Remember that carbons in a line bond structure, for example, have some hydrogens that are inferred but which are not drawn for you. Now it's useful to use the Lewis symbols like we saw in our video practice for lesson 1.1. If we use the Lewis symbols to figure out what the usual neutral form of the atom is, we can see how many bonds it should be able to make and how many lone pairs it would have. So a carbon should make four bonds with each of these unpaired electrons and then would have no lone pairs. We see this carbon where only three bonds are drawn we know that there should be another hydrogen there, for example. A neutral nitrogen should make one, two, three bonds, one for each of the unpaired electrons, and this nitrogen down here has three bonds to it, but it should also have a lone pair if it's neutral, and in the structure we're given, it is in fact neutral. Oxygen should make two bonds with those two unpaired electrons and have two lone pairs. So two bonds, check, but we're missing those lone pairs. Same situation down at this oxygen over here. We have a bond to a hydrogen and a bond to a carbon, but we're missing those two lone pairs. So now let's fill those in. I've highlighted those in red on this page. And now we can easily see all the sigma bonds and the lone pairs. So now we should be able to easily assign the hybridization by seeing how many orbitals we need to be hybridized to hold lone pairs and sigma bonds. One thing you'll need to note is that if you have a triple bond, two of those bonds are pi bonds, not sigma bonds. You only need the hybrid orbitals to hold the sigma bond. So keeping that in mind, we can assign the hybridization. sp3 hybrid atoms can hold four pairs of electrons in lone pairs or in sigma bonds to the hydrogen and carbon in this case. So if I have four pairs of electrons held in sigma bonds and lone pairs, I need an sp3 hybrid atom. This carbon has four sigma bonds as well, and that would also then be sp3 hybrid. In the case of this oxygen up here, we have two lone pairs and only one of these two is a sigma bond. Remember that a double bond has one pi bond in it. So we need a total of three pairs of electrons. We need to mix an s with two p orbitals to hold those. Same with this sp2 hybridized carbon here. And then when we get to these triple bonds, two of the bonds in a triple bond are pi bonds. We have a sigma bond there, a sigma bond there, no lone pairs in the carbon, I need two pairs of electrons to be held by hybrid orbitals, and an sp hybrid atom can accomplish that. With the nitrogen, it also has only the one sigma bond up here to the carbon, but it also has a lone pair, and it needs to be sp as well. Most of the problems we'll see in this video require us to assign hybridization as the first step, so this answer recap is pretty important. First thing you've got to do is to fill in the missing CH bonds in the line bond structures. Remember, they're not always drawn. We also need to fill in missing lone pairs because we need to know how many sigma bonds and lone pairs we have to be able to figure out which type of hybridization is needed. Once we know how many hybrid orbitals are needed, we can then assign the hybridization to correspond to that number of pairs that need to be held. It's also pretty much the same process to assign hybridization for charged atoms, and here we're asked to assign the hybridization just for the charged atoms in these structures below. We're going to follow the same procedures in our first problem. We need to use the Lewis symbols of the atoms to figure out the usual neutral state of each element, and then to deduce how many lone pairs might be missing that aren't drawn on these structures, and how many sigma bonds there might be, especially in the case of carbons where we might be missing a hydrogen. Now, we've seen this usual neutral column in our video on formal charges for lesson 1.1, and now we need to adjust this and say, well, how does this usual neutral atom in its Lewis symbol change when it becomes an anion or a cation? Well, you need to gain one electron to become a negative one charged anion. So the carbon would have to add one electron in, and then it would look like this. So a negatively charged carbon, like we see here, should have three, one, two, three, count only the unpaired ones, three bonds, so hey, we're missing a hydrogen here. And it should have a lone pair, which is not drawn in this structure, for example. 
and the same for all these other atoms. So I've got those filled in in red here, and now it's time to assign the hybridization just like we did in the previous problem, by counting the number of sigma bonds and lone pairs that we need to have held by hybrid orbitals. So now we see with this oxygen as a lone pair, we figured that out from the Lewis symbol for the cationic oxygen with the three sigma bonds, it needs to be sp3 hybridized, and sp3 hybrid atom can hold four electron pairs. And we go through that same process for these other atoms. We have one lone pair and one sigma bond. We need two pairs to be held by hybrid orbitals. Here we only have three sigma bonds, sp2. Here we have three sigma bonds and a lone pair. That's four total, sp3. The positively charged nitrogen has just four sigma bonds, sp3. Two lone pairs with two sigma bonds is sp3 as well. And even this oxygen only has one bond. It still has three lone pairs. That's still three pairs total that need to be held by hybrid orbitals, so it's sp3. So the procedure we went through is really quite similar to our first problem. We need to fill in any missing CH bonds in the line bond structure, fill in the missing lone pairs. And it's a little bit more involved when you have charges, as we saw. Then we can assign the hybridization following the same procedure we used before by counting the pairs that need hybrid orbitals to hold them. Another application of hybridization that we're asked about a lot in these organic chemistry courses is to provide molecular geometries about particular atoms. So here I have an example with four atoms that we're asked about. So first we need to assign the hybridization just like in our first problem in the video. And once we know the hybridization, we need to remember that there is a particular geometry that's associated for each of these given hybridizations. Usually we learn these in the course of learning VSEPR or valence shell electron pair repulsion theory in our general chemistry classes. And this is a matter of committing this to memory. We need to know that an sp3 hybridized center has a tetrahedral geometry, and that would be the geometry about any sp3 hybridized atom. Similarly, all sp2 hybridized atoms will exhibit a trigonal planar geometry and all of the sp hybridized atoms exhibit a geometry that is linear. So to recap our procedure, we need to assign the hybridization following our usual procedure, and then we need to remember what geometry corresponds to each hybridization state. Another type of problem that's shown up on some exams is a question asking you which type of orbitals are overlapping to form each type of indicated bond. And we first need to know the hybridization, so I filled those in. We've, and then we have to remember that every single bond is a sigma bond. So we have one, two, three, four types of single bonds that were asked about in this question. The only type of single bond that would be made with other types of orbitals would be a bond with hydrogen. Hydrogen doesn't have any orbitals other than an s orbital, so it can't have hybrid orbitals. So knowing that these are sigma bonds, we simply have to overlap the hybrid orbitals from adjacent atoms. So if we look at this one, for example, we see that an sp3 hybridized carbon and sp3 hybridized carbon are bonding to one another. We know that they use their hybrid orbitals to overlap. So an sp3 orbital and an sp3 orbital overlap to make that particular bond. Here we have an sp2 hybridized carbon bonding to an sp3 hybridized carbon. So the two orbitals that have to overlap to make that sigma bond are an sp3 and an sp2. And finally over here we have this single bond between an sp hybridized carbon and an sp2 hybridized carbon. So they use their hybrid orbitals there. And over here we have two sp2 hybridized carbons overlapping to make a sigma bond with their sp2 hybridized orbital. But what about this triple bond? How do we treat that? That's not just a single sigma bond. So the last thing we need to remember to be able to assign these properly is that every double bond has one sigma bond and one pi bond. Every triple bond still only has one sigma bond and there are two pi bonds. And every pi bond is made by overlapping p-type orbitals. So if we assign the orbital overlaps for all three of the bonds in the CN triple bond, we need to say, well, there's a sigma bond that's made by overlapping of two sp hybridized orbitals, and then there are two pi bonds, each of which is made by overlapping a p orbital with a p orbital. Using the same rationale in our knowledge of hybrid orbitals, we should also be able to figure out what type of orbitals hold each type of lone pair. To address this type of problem, we again first have to assign the hybridization. If we fill those in, we have an sp3 hybridized oxygen, an sp2 hybridized oxygen, and an sp hybridized nitrogen. And we're really done with the problem because we know that it's the hybrid orbitals that hold the lone pairs. So a lone pair on sp2 hybridized oxygen is in an sp2 orbital. We can also take a look at bond angles, and this again requires us to start the process by assigning the hybridization. So we're going to follow the procedure and the important atom 
where an angle is the one in the middle. So if I know the angles around the central atom, it doesn't matter what these other atoms x are, the geometry of the orbitals of the central atom are what will dictate what that angle is. And that's what we're looking for in this problem. So let's go ahead and assign those hybridizations for the central atom of each of these angles. So once we've done that, we need to figure out what the geometry is about that type of hybridized atom in each of these cases, sp, sp2, or sp3. And just like in our previous problem, we saw that we have tetrahedral for sp3, trigonal planar for sp2, and linear for sp. Now there's a certain bond angle that corresponds to each of those geometries. So we have a tetrahedral geometry features angles of 109.5 degrees ideally. Trigonal planar 120 and linear of course is 180 degrees. So now we just have to match those angles with the hybridizations we've assigned. So anywhere where we've assigned an sp3 hybridized orbital it's around 109.5, maybe some small distortions due to repulsions. Every sp2 hybridized case will have a 120 degree angle. We have two such cases in this problem. And if we're looking at the angle around the sp hybridized atom, it's a 180 degree 